budgeting for profit. I am a huge baseball fan. I love the game. I love to study it, love the players, and I also love how it parallels the game I'm in, the game we're all in, the automotive service industry. If you know something about baseball, there is a rare player known as the five-tool baseball player, the guy who can run fast, has a powerful, accurate throwing arm, and a powerful swing that hits home runs and drives in lots of runs. These are the guys making about $20 million a year playing baseball. When people ask me what I do, I have two responses. We provide simple thoughts for complex concepts with challenging solutions. We teach timeless business principles, sprinkled with real business modeling that works. It is our job to remain in a state of refinement, always polishing our financial, leadership, management, strategic, and tactical tools, enabling shop owners like you to put them to good use. Taking a cue from baseball, we can help you become a five-tool auto repair shop owner, and this chapter is devoted to the financial tool, specifically budgeting for profit. The automotive repair business is a good business if you understand the financial aspects that really affect everything else in your business. Pay plans, gross profit, the cost of doing business, product price points, startup and maintenance costs, employee compensation, and how to actually make money. The best way to get an accurate read on all of this is with a budget. If that sounds boring and dry to you, keep reading. You just may be surprised. Why budget? Budgeting provides a roadmap to keeping your business financially solvent. We're going to talk about orientation of what budgeting really means and start you thinking about what you're doing. And we will walk you through the language of budgets. From there, we'll spring into action. We'll take a closer look at the construction of a budget and walk through the habits, the perseverance, and the attainment to get a budget in place. So let's start with some very simple questions that have only two answer options, yes or no, not yes, but, or no, but, just a simple yes or no. Do you have a revenue issue? Do you have a gross profit issue? Do you have a spending issue? Are you the issue? Are you paying last month's bills with this month's revenue? If you are, that's an indicator that you don't have enough working capital in your business. You are 30 days from going out of business. Are you stacking up cash? If not, why not? What makes budgeting for profit work so well? Because you're examining a number of indicators that factor into your business's financial health, balance sheets, point-of-sale system, check registers, profit and loss statements, to grasp a true picture of your numbers. We need to do this manually. Don't push a button in a software program and think you have a budget, at least not at this stage. It is imperative you input the numbers manually into our spreadsheet to understand the process. I am going to make this statement even stronger. This is one duty you should never delegate and most definitely not abdicate. So what are the grand purposes of budgeting? First, you must learn how to budget so you may also learn how to stack up cash. It's not just to pay your bills nor restrict or control spending. It's to understand how to stack up cash in order to make your business financially healthy. Second, you must understand your true cost of doing business, learning why P&Ls lie and balance sheets leak. Third, it's about how to chase dollars, then the dimes, learning to fix the top part of the budget first, then the bottom. Speaking the language. Now, when we start talking budgets and budgeting, we speak a relevant language. In our budgeting process, you'll hear the terms sales revenue and cost of goods. And in our business, the cost of goods amounts to what we pay our technicians in gross pay, whether they are general service, hourly, or flat rate. Part of your cost of goods also includes items such as sublet, parts, tires, towing, and contra. This would be anything that is resold on closed repair orders. In our budgeting spreadsheet format, the sales revenue and cost of goods is calculated in the top section, above line 47, which shows your gross profit dollars and combined percentages. 
then you have the cost of doing business. Well, Gary, you're probably thinking, that's pretty much everything. That's not good enough. The cost of doing business needs to be organized into three parts, personnel expense, operating expense, and fixed and occupancy. Another term you'll often hear is forecast. Essentially, your forecast has two parts, projections and predictions. The projection is historical data projected forward. You base your projections on what you did on average in the last three months, six months, 12 months, and the month you are currently budgeting. With predictions, you look back to the same month last year to compare multiple items and look for wild cards, construction on the road your shop is located, a downward trend in sales, a new service advisor at the front counter, perhaps new staff members who will not achieve the same level of productivity. Your prediction contains the wild card, something that's going to change the number, forecast the number differently. So your projection plus prediction equals a forecast. How will you know if you're making money each day? With our daily operation snapshot spreadsheet, you can check and run your daily P&L to see where you are. You know your budget and your true cost of doing business. By plugging those numbers in each day, you can make these calculations. Stay with me here. We have a few more terms to get through in our budget vocabulary. You'll often hear the phrases unloaded versus loaded labor. In our budgeting for profit process, we want the labor unloaded. That means we don't add matching taxes, insurance, or anything to that unloaded figure just the gross pay to our technicians. That's what we call cost of goods unloaded labor. Now, contra is another term used in the budgeting process and is usually brought about through advertising premiums, maybe a $25 off coupon or a percentage off of a particular service. These sorts of promotions create contras. Simply add all of those up, plug them into your budget, and these become part of your cost of goods. A contra occurs any time you reduce your labor profit and or your parts profit. Contra also occurs in a comeback, which is a term we need to delete from our vocabularies. As your team seeks to diminish comebacks, commit to looking at these sorts of incidents as customer service opportunities. A broad definition of contra is any time you have to eat, chew, and swallow the cost of something, whether via a promotion or a do-over. You want to track contras to see what you're giving away. Now, we also have what is known as a rolling budget. A rolling budget is past, present, and next. What does that mean? Well, as you look at closing out the previous month, you are reconciling all bank and vendor statements and making sure all of your checks are properly coded. When these tasks are complete, you close the previous month and look at the revenue, cost of goods, billing, living within your current month's budget, and building the budget for the following month. This is not a 12-month or even a 6-month build-out. Just build a month in advance, continually throughout the year. That's why it's called a rolling budget. So now you have your forecast, or what you budgeted. When the month is over, you'll have an actual. The difference between the budget and the actual equals variance. True net profit also called TNP, is the money you can extract from the business that does not shrink working capital or reserve funds. I've had a lot of clients say, Gary, my P&L can tell me the same thing. No, your P&L can actually lie to you about your profits as well as your cash position. I will explain how, but just file that tidbit away for now. Three times rule. As you continue to fortify your business, you'll need to strive for and operate under the three times rule regarding working capital. That is, three times your monthly fixed expenses in your working capital account. If you don't have enough working capital, you need to have a line of credit, borrow money, whatever it takes to create enough cash to operate the business. The hardest part about the business is having enough cash to operate each day. The three times rule also applies to your reserve fund. So in addition to having three times your monthly fixed expenses for working capital, you will also need the same amount in reserves. When your business arrives at this point, you can start paying down debt, taking out extra profits from the business, pay some bonuses, etc., because your business has achieved financial health. 
I want to take a moment and discuss accrual and cash accounting. You need to know if you're running on accrual or cash. Accrual is putting everything into the month or into the time period that the cost of operations is going into, even though it's not paid. You're running cash if it's going into your accounting system every time you pay it or make a deposit. Whereas cash is probably the least desirable and accrual is the most common, both work. It's up to you, but be sure to know the differences. Please check with your CPA for making the best election, cash or accrual. We always talk about chasing dollars. Anything above line 47, our gross profit line, is considered chasing dollars. If we don't get enough gross profit, dollars, we'll never make money in this business. So everything below line 47 is the cost of doing business, chasing dimes. Always remember that you want to spend your day chasing dollars instead of dimes. 30% rule. To that end, I want to shift gears a moment and talk directly to those of you in the mechanical business regarding the 30% rule. Say your shop shows $1 million in annual revenue. That business can be worth $300,000 to you as the owner. If you understand your numbers, if you understand your pay plan, if you have all the pieces of the pie together and your ducks in a row, so to speak, so you, as the owner, receive $300,000 for your investment. You may take $100,000 out personally and leave $200,000 in your business. You may divide it evenly, $150,000 out and leave $150,000. That is the 30% rule. This is not net profit. Any time you exceed $1 million a year, then it may go to 31, 32, 33, but this 30% is not net profit. By the same token, any time you go below a million, that is $900,000 or lower, the 30% now drops 28, 25, even as low as 10%. You see, the smaller your business, the 30% rule doesn't work. It is right at a million dollar mark and above that the 30% rule takes off the other way. This is money that the owner can extract or leave in the business. So essentially, a million dollar automotive repair facility is worth $300,000 in income to the owner. Mailbox drive-by theory. Detour's over, and I'm shifting back to another principle the mailbox drive-by theory. Let me ask you this, do your customers love you? Do they always trade at your shop? When I ask this question, I am usually told, well, of course they do, Gary, they are loyal. So if your business fell on difficult times, even to a point you might have to close your doors, are you saying they love you so much that they would drive by your house, open your mailbox and put money in your mailbox? The answer is no. They love you when you're there. When you're gone, you're gone. They'll just go down the road to somebody else. So we need to charge what we need to charge to make a profit, or we've lost that opportunity. And sometimes that means raising our prices. 20 years ago, a mechanical shop had to make 42% gross profit in order to make enough money to apply the 30% rule. Today, that gross profit margin is 63%. Why? Our cost of doing business has gone up, up, and up. If our sale price didn't increase along with it, then we're now losing money because they will slowly eat into each other. That number will increase by a percentage point each year. So next year, the gross profit margin will be 64%, the following year, 65%, and so on. That's the only way to keep a business running. Know your cost of doing business. Know what you have to sell your goods for know what your cost of goods is, and price it to make a profit. Do not price it to break even. Your business will not survive. Labor Guide, Labor Index Let's talk about Labor Guide and Labor Index. The Labor Guide is not the Bible. It is there to help you to build an estimate in order to pay your technicians and determine the necessary labor margin for the job. We have found the Labor Guide serves as an excellent starting point. Then multiply that amount by 1.1, 1.5, 1.25, etc., based on a number of external factors, like your local marketplace, labor rate, desired margins, for example. Relying solely on the labor guide potentially shortens you on time, 
and therefore profits, with each repair order. In our budgeting for profit process, we also advocate indexing your labor rate by 50 cents per month. So every month you go into your point of sale system, POS system, and raise your labor rate 50 cents. This ensures you will keep up with the 1% annual increase in cost of doing business. According to all the studies we have done since 1992, each year your gross profit margin must increase by one percentage point, just to keep up with the rising cost of doing business. In 1992, we taught the same profit concept when it was 42% gross profit margins. Fast forward to 2014, and now it has to be 64%. We see this never-ending need to increase our margins to maintain our desired profits going forward. This is a much easier transition than increasing yearly, plus it makes you more money throughout the year. Now, before you start the 50 cents per month indexing, please grab a calculator or a pencil and paper. I'm going to show you what happens. Let's say the labor factor is 0.25. What does that mean? Well, if your highest paid technician is getting paid $25 an hour on flag time, and then you divide it by 0.25, that tells you what your ideal labor rate needs to be. So if you're paying $25 an hour, your labor rate needs to be $100, because you need 75% ideal margin on labor. Then you can begin indexing 50 cents per month, not markup, margin. Always remember we need to get paid for what we know, not what we do. Don't worry about what the guy down the street charges. This is easy to say, but hard to do. Budgets versus P&Ls. The budget is never going to be a mirror image of your P&L. If it was, there's no reason to do it. There's only one reason we create a P&L, and that's to pay taxes. The government says these are the gap accounting principles, and you have to put it in this way so your taxes are paid properly. But, as I have mentioned before, your P&L can lie to you. For example, if you have a note that is $5,000 a month, let's assume that $1,000 of that note is interest. When you write that check each month, $4,000 of it goes to your balance sheet as a reduction in liability, and $1,000 hits your P&L. But you didn't allocate that $4,000 negative that the cash leaked out. So there's a balance sheet leakage, and it costs you money. Your P&L just lied to you. And why? Because any funds leaving your business, even those that don't hit the P&L, is a true cost of doing business. So in our budget for profit format, you will now capture those and get a portion of your true cost of doing business. That's what's missing in Small Business Auto Repair Shop America, an accurate answer to the question, what is my actual true cost of doing business? Our budgeting process will answer that for you. Our clients receive an interactive budget spreadsheet, and we coach them through the steps. When filled out correctly, they first click on the three-month tab and fill in the numbers using the most recent collective three-month P&L closeout for any given quarter. Those numbers are then inserted into one column that itemizes labor revenue, labor cost unloaded, sublet revenue, cost of revenue, parts revenue, cost of parts, tire revenue, cost of tires, towing revenue, cost of towing, miscellaneous revenue, cost of miscellaneous, all the way down to line 47, which we've mentioned a couple of times in this chapter. Line 47 is mission critical because that is the gross profit you have to pay your bills. Remember the 64% margin in 2014 we mentioned before? It applies here and now. The next phase of this process involves expenditures for personnel, operating, and fixed in occupancy. You take your balance sheet, your P&L, your checkbook register, and every document that has to do with your accounting process or your bookkeeping process, and plug in the numbers. This identifies what you spent. As we walk through the process for personnel, operating expenses, fixed, and occupancy, you'll arrive at what we call Line 106, the operational cost of doing business. We're not done yet, because now we have to add in the rest of what we see as a cost of doing business in order to get a true cost of doing business. Remember the three times rule? If you don't have enough cash in your operating account, you have to build that account up. 
we recommend a line of credit to help build your working capital account so growth can happen sooner. So every month, we will allocate budget X amount of dollars to build up this account as a cost of doing business. Once the capital account built up based on three times rule, then you are ready to build your reserve account. And you build your reserve account up to three times. Remember, this is part of the budget, part of the cash flow into your business. Then you consider how much money you will make every single month in profit. Now, wait a minute. How can profit be part of the cost of doing business? Stay with me. Profits as a cost of doing business. Look at desired profit as a cost of doing business. No, I have not lost my mind. It's just a good common sense approach. This will bring the concept of budgeting for profit to the forefront. You will learn what it truly takes to become financially healthy. If we don't budget a dollar amount of profit and view it as a cost of doing business, we will end up getting the leftovers. Leftovers will never stack up cash. I want to reemphasize that everything our coaching process does pertains to the automotive repair industry. Our budgeting, marketing, leadership, auto staffing process techniques are industry specific. We have developed proven approaches to building a successful auto repair shop, and our focus is squarely on shop owners like you. If you study accounting, you'll not learn what's contained in this chapter or any other chapter. So the idea of profit being part of the cost of doing business is not something taught in Accounting 101. Because we are making a profit, we're going to have to pay federal taxes, aren't we? Perhaps we have to pay state taxes as well, so we need to budget for paying taxes. If you are paying long-term notes and or short-term notes, we must budget for those also. By the time all of these are accounted for, we are now getting a picture of your true cost of doing business. That, my fellow shop owners, is what budgeting for profit is all about. Just to bullet list some of what's included in the true cost of doing business. Personnel costs, operating costs, fixed and occupancy, building working capital, profit, reserve, taxes, federal and state, payments of money flowing out of the business through your balance sheet. Daily Snapshot P&L Tool Wow, now that we've budgeted for profit by understanding what our true cost of doing business really is, we are ready to use our Daily Snapshot P&L Tool. With this tool, you no longer have to wait for your CPA to tell you whether you made money. You have this information readily available every single day. You will always know exactly where you stand and whether you're making money or you're hitting budget. Now, remember the budget and the cost of doing business is inclusive of all the terms and items we just talked about in the budget. That's why we call it budgeting for profit, because all of that is built in. And I would venture to say that if you do not know this number in your business, that's why you don't make money. That's why it's too hard to pay your bills. That's why you may be wondering if you should be in business at all. Fixing a low gross profit margin. Remember, we want to learn to stack up the cash, so we must maximize our combined gross profit margin before we can become financially healthy. We must always fix labor and parts margins before you start into your cost of doing business. Our clients are coached through their budget spreadsheet in order to trend the most current three months, six months, and 12 months in order to understand better how their money leaves the business and why and how the P&L is lying to them. You'll recall that forecasting is projecting historical data forward and predicting what might happen. Whereas your P&L can say, I made money. Your cash flow may say, I have no money. When we maximize our gross profit, we are chasing dollars. Likewise, when we reduce our expenses, we are chasing dimes. We need to chase dollars and then dimes. In order to do this, we have to start with reverse in mind a shop owner has to know the dollars needed. And let me take a moment to reassure you that you are capable. This doesn't require a CPA certificate, and you don't have to have accounting knowledge to be brought up to speed with this process. We coach each shop owner through each step, equipping them to move forward and upward as five tool players in the automotive service industry. Takeaway. 
Budgeting for profit using our spreadsheet tool combines all aspects of the cash coming in and cash going out. Remember, P&Ls can lie to you. Remember, balance sheets can leak. The true cost of doing business is the ultimate goal to budgeting for profit. If you are paying last month's bill with this month's revenue, your working capital is dangerously low. Are you stacking up cash? If not, why not? Chasing dollars above the line is first, and then chase dimes below the line in adjusting your cost of doing business. Never use your point-of-sale software to determine the correct numbers. Budgeting for profit is about tracking trends. Since 1992, cost of doing business has increased 1% per year. Index your labor rate by 50 cents per month after you have achieved your gross profit designated goal. True net profit is money you can extract from your business without shrinking your working capital or reserve fund. Gary's Golden Nuggets Budgeting provides a roadmap to keeping your business financially solvent. In the auto shop repair industry, the cost of goods amounts to what we pay our technicians in gross pay, sublet, parts, towing, tires, and any other items we buy for resale. Projection plus prediction equals a forecast. Financially fit means achieving both the three times and 30% rules. The labor guide serves as a starting point, not an absolute indicator of labor charges. Your budget for profit, when completed properly, will give you a true picture of how to stack up cash.